Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I am Saba. I am a co-founder and solutions architect with Cloud Enablers, a company based out in India, Chennai. I head the Cloud Lab, and I work on providing architectural design consulting for cloud-based solutions. I've been working with OpenStack for the last four years. So the topic uh, today is orchestration across multiple cloud platforms using heat. And uh, this is going to be the agenda of today. Uh, introduction of heat at a high level and uh, multi-cloud orchestration. And we'll touch upon the Tosca standards and um, the heat features supporting multi-cloud orchestration and the centralized template library using uh, with indexing and search. And what are the new features that is coming up in Kilo? So these are all going to be the agenda. So how many of you have a hands-on experience with heat? Well, there's quite a few number. Good. OK. So I will run through the introduction, uh, basically. Um, <coughs> so heat provides a mechanism to orchestrate OpenStack resources through a template-driven model. So heat supports different templating model. Um, it supports CFN. And hot, hot is the hot orchestration template. It's OpenStack native uh, DSL. And heat is not just about provisioning resources in OpenStack. It is also about providing advanced functionality like high availability, for instances, auto scaling, software configurations, and the software deployment, and also the nested stacks. So to look at the evolution of heat, heat was started in Grizzly. The incubated project to support cloud formation template in OpenStack. In Havana, introduced a hot template. Basically, they found a need for having a own DSL in OpenStack to orchestrate the different resources available in OpenStack. And also in Havana, we introduced the stack of resources and the lifecycle management of a stack. In ISOs, uh, the feature was extended to support support uh, software configuration, auto scaling, uh, notification and alerts, abandoning of stacks. In Juno, then it was extended to support the recovery of uh, the resources and uh, improved scalability and the visibility. In Kilo, we see that like you now there are some key features like uh, multi-region stack and uh, software configuration improvements are done. And Oslo version objects are also introduced in Kilo. So heat stack creation. So basically, like you know, the end user can apply the hot template or a CFN template. It goes through the API, and heat engine orchestrate the different tasks involved in the hot template to the open stack resources. It is authenticated through Keystone, and the whole resources provision through the heat stack is maintained as a stack. And we can do a life cycle operations of a stack. We can abandon a stack. We can update a stack. We can do the life cycle operations on the stack for the entire set of resources that we provision through the template. So now we will see how heat can be extended to support multi-cloud orchestration. So when you say orchestration, it is not just about orchestrating a single instance of OpenStack. We may need to have a environment where we maintain orchestration as a standalone one so that like, you know, we orchestrate the different OpenStack installation within the environment. We may have a production setup of OpenStack. We may have a QA environment. We may also have a need for orchestrating some public clouds like Amazon or any other clouds. So if we keep the heat as a standalone engine, we should be able to orchestrate the multiple cloud using hot templates. So here we see some new standards coming in, Tosca. So there is a new project in OpenStack, the heat translator, which translates Tosca to hot template. And then the hot template can be applied using a heat engine to orchestrate the different resources. So I will touch upon Tosca. Tosca is a topology and orchestration specification for cloud application. It improves the portability of application deployment across different clouds. And it is a, basically, it is a, a language to describe the service components and the relationship 
using a service topology. So it is an OASIS standard. This is actually coming up. And this topology, Tosca, is defined as XML. So this is the way the topology uh, looks like. You have a service template. The service template contains a topology template. And topology template, in turn, contains your node type and the relationship type. And we can put together all these different uh, topology templates in a plan and execute the plan. So <clears throat> what are all the things that we require in a multi-cloud orchestration using HEAT? We'll see a quick demo that covers the centralized template library and how do we enable indexing and search for the templates that we maintain in our environment. How do we define access control for templates? And uh, how do we orchestrate across different clouds using, basically using a heat engine? So I will run through a quick demo. Okay, so this is how the typical okay, this is how the typical heat looks like in horizon. You can go and launch a stack here. You can provide your YAML structure as a file input or a direct input here and we can execute a stack. And then you can handle the lifecycle operation of a stack. So <clears throat> there is currently there is no mechanism for maintaining the template library in Horizon. But he does support a lot of command line, act, um, uh, command line commands to execute and uh, uh, apply all these uh, operations. So what do I mean by template library? So we can define templates and metadata for the different templates that we maintain for different use cases involved in the environment. We can have, um, <coughs> I'll show you. So we have different templates here, uh, which can be used for orchestrating different clouds. Each of the templates has a metadata the templates are managed similar to the way the images are managed here. So you have a scope definition done. There are certain global templates, the project-specific templates, and private templates. You can define this uh, thing so, so that all the templates are maintained centrally in an environment. And then you can have a tagging mechanism to tag and define your own meta tags for the templates. You can classify the templates for the different use cases, provisioning, deployment, all this can be done using a metadata model. And you can index all this metadata and search through some search engines. Now I'm going to execute a hot template against a AWS cloud. So initially, Heat was developed to support CFN. Now Heat has much more capability. Now we have to see how hot templates can be extended to orchestrate Amazon. So now with this example, I'm executing a template here. It becomes a job, and then I will, I can also go and execute <coughs> this is a template for creating a VM and creating a volume and attaching it. 
So, I am going to execute it. Selecting which OpenStack cloud I want to run. I'm, I have some input parameters for the template, uh, which are pre filled in the template as a parameter. I'm going to execute that now. So, now we can see the status of this particular execution in the destination cloud. So we created an instance called core. It is spawning. It is in the process of create, getting created. In Amazon, we created one stack. So it is a LAMP provisioning, AWS using hot template. So it provisioned in Amazon East region. So the same thing can be extended to apply to a brokerage platform now. It is provisioning a new workload called CNX workload here. Okay, VM provision CS is happening here. It's in progress state. We can also see the status here. So we created one stack in Amazon. It created an instance, and then we created one in OpenStack, and then we created one in the Compute Next platform. Basically, Compute Next is a cloud brokerage platform which connects to uh, multiple cloud providers. It connects to close to 40 providers. So basically, it provides us the ability to talk to various providers. <coughs> so this heat is in progress. So now, going back to Just one minute. Okay, got it. So we saw the centralized template library with metadata. We saw how the template metadata can be indexed and searched. And we saw how template can be defined with multiple scopes and how it can be executed against the different platforms. So, and now we will see how this is possible, how we can utilize the existing heat features to extend the capability to support and orchestrate multiple clouds. So the first thing is heat architecture. Heat architecture itself enables us to define the resource plugin, and we can extend the resource plugin to support multiple cloud platforms. And heat also supports a standalone heat deployment. We can actually like, you know, decouple it from the keystone and then we can orchestrate against multiple cloud 
by dynamically passing the credentials of the different cloud. And Heat also supports context. Basically, context enables us to uh, run the stack against different regions within the open stack. So this is the Heat architecture. So Heat can be instantiated through the API, or we can use CLI or Horizon. And whenever Heat receives a request through API, it goes through the message queuing protocol, and Heat engine process the request. The Heat engine consists of various elements. It has the functions, like you know, all the functions defined in the template, like digest, repeat, all this are processed to function. And it has a parameter section where it handles all the input parameters, validates the constraints, and then that it's a template parser, which parses the different tasks involved in the template and execute it through the resource plugin. So Heat Engine basically orchestrate the resource plugin and execute all the connections through the API. And Heat also has a mechanism to talk to the destination VM, the VM created through the CFN signal. And Heat maintains all the data in the DB. And uh, Heat resource plugin has two sections. One is the native resource plugin, and then the second one is the contributor resource plugin. So what is the contributor resource plugin? Uh, when we see the contributor resource plugin, anybody can extend and put the plugins here. So Rackspace, we see plugin for Docker, and Nachi, it's a time aggregation database as a service. Uh, it is part of Sailometer. And uh, the Mistral workflow, Zakar is a queuing service, and Keystone. These are all the different contributed uh, uh, plugins available. And each of the plugin has the resources. For Rackspace, we see server resource, DNS, network, and load balancer. Each of the resource has a lifecycle methods. Basically, a resource has a base class. The base class can be extended for different lifecycle methods, like create, update, delete, and resume your stack. Each of this method has the attributes and properties. Basically, the property are the one which we provide as an input to the plugin, and attributes are the one which we get as a return for that particular lifecycle method. And the resource plugin has a mapping section where the plugin is mapped to the template action. So like you know, whatever we specify in the template, say AWS colon EC2 colon instance is mapped to this particular plugin through this mapping. So the next one is standalone heat. So by uh, the upstream heat, if you download, you can set up the environment. After setting up the environment with uh, the OpenStack tenant name and the credential, in the heat configuration file, there is an option called multi-cloud. We can make the multi-cloud as true, and we can give the allowed auth URL of different uh, endpoint of the open stack here. So whenever we execute a stack, it goes and validates against this allowed auth URL, and then it executes it. So here in this example, uh, in a standalone heat mode, we are executing a stack um, by supplying instance.yaml and passing the parameters associated with the instance.yaml. It goes and create an instance, and you can see that in the horizon. And then the third thing is the context. What is the context? Basically, it is orchestration of orchestration. You can orchestrate heat itself. You can, through the context uh, statement, uh, you can pass the template as an input parameter for the stack, and also we can define the region as an input parameter. So after giving the input, it goes and creates another stack in the given region. This is used for like, you know, deploying a VM across multiple regions. So I'll show you how this is done. So we can do a heat stack create, the multi-region context. We can specify the <coughs> YAML file and give the parameters. Okay. 
parameters, it goes and create the instances in the different regions. Then the centralized template repository with indexing and search. So whenever we define a template, the template has two parts. Like you no know, template has the content, which has the set of instructions, and we can have a metadata defined for a template. Like what is the purpose of the template, uh, the classification of the template, so we can define the metadata. And if we have a mechanism to index it through a search engine like Solar or Elasticsearch, we can define a schema for the template, and we can index this data into the uh, search engine. After execution, it gets created as a stack, and stack gets set an output parameter. The output parameter, again, can be indexed through the indexing bridge. We can have a different schema for the stack and maintain it in the solar, so that like, you know, we would be able to map the different resources which are provisioned in the stack. So if we, can, if we are searching for IP, we know which template created it, what is the stack associated with it. We'll be able to map all this through the uh, search engine mechanism. So by enabling the centralized template library and indexing, we get a faceted search, a full text search capability, and the searching of both the input parameter and the output parameter of a template. So there are uh, like you know, the, the multi-region support for, uh, these are all some of the references that we have taken. There is a heat translator open source code available, and there is a blueprint for, um, a blueprint called Heater, which talks about uh, the indexing and search. Any, any questions? Yes. It's one of the GitHub project now. Translator. He translator, yeah. Am I supposed to use this? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, are you building the network between these two clouds as well? We can actually, you know, we can specify the network elements also as a resource type. So uh, uh, the, uh, the neutron as a resource type is supported in heat. Yes. So we can create a private network. We can create a subnet through the heat template. And, OK, but then part of you, it looked like you're orchestrating an application across both AWS and, and a, a, uh, an OpenStack cloud, right? right? right. And then the, the, are you using neutron to build a connectivity between these two? No. So uh, basically, like, no, you, had, you have to manage these clouds independently so, but if you have to need a connection between these two, then you can use extend the VPN capability of both OpenStack as well as uh, Amazon to establish that connectivity. Okay, so for right now, basically the connectivity would just be via the internet or something, basically. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is possible through Tosca. So, I mean, the Tosca enables us to make these templates portable across different clouds. So, we define a standard, your topology, uh, as service template. And if we specify the provider, we can generate a heat template with respect to a specific region. So, you will have one Tosca template, which can be converted as per the different platforms of OpenStack or Amazon. Mm-hmm. Okay, each resource on different cloud. Okay, each resource on different cloud is not possible. Yeah. Because the authentication happens before the execution so each resource inside a template is not possible at this moment. Right. I have a question about the directory. 
uh, in which version of it do you support indexing, directory indexing and search? Is it just a blueprint and uh, work to be done right now? Um, currently, uh, it is just a blueprint stage. It is uh, not available as part of upstream. Right. <coughs> yeah, in Kilo, um, some features of CFN, CFN is being deprecated. For example, the CFN watch is being deprecated as part of Kilo. Uh, but still, the CFN, the query parameter, uh, the query API is still supported. So because now Heat supports much more resource types than what CFN has. So it, it's still, some part of it is still available. But I think like you know, down the line, the CFN will be deprecated. That's what I guess. So. Could you uh, elaborate on how auto scaling work with the multi region? Like, could you right. auto scale based on uh, alarms from one region mm -hmm. and auto scale on another region? Okay. So, uh, Heat has a, a watcher task as part of the Heat engine. So, uh, the the silo meter can create an alarm and trigger this watcher task, and it can execute another stack that will go and provision a VM in a specific region. So it basically it happens based on a matrix that is provided, an alarm provided by a silometer. And this alarm executes a heat template. That heat template provisions a VM and adds it into the load balancer. Uh, what is the naming? Glance image? So if I understand your question correctly, uh, how do we have the glance image? Uh, mm -hmm. Correct, correct. Right, right. Yeah, it is basically a parameter thing. Basically, like no, the, we cannot have a same image ID across two different instances of OpenStack. We need to pass it as a parameter. Yes. Um, he does not monitor it, but it gets the, yes, right, right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm not much familiar with Congress and what it does. Okay. Right. Right. I, I, I'm not very familiar with it. Maybe I can uh, look at it and then come back to you. Okay. Yes, it is possible. Um, say now we have a mechanism to um, auto scale, right? So when we do auto scale, we basically like you know, trigger a template. If we trigger a template which provisions a VM in Amazon, 
and we can add it to your global load balancer, you are basically bursting it. OK, okay so now. It, it can be, uh, basically the connection to the Amazon API is through the internet. But if you want the connectivity between the two VM, we can establish a VPN through heat template itself. Yeah, another question here. Mm -hmm. um, so the example you showed uh, where you provided the credentials in the heat.conf for uh, a second cloud or a remote cloud mm -hmm. uh, by setting the multi-cloud equal to true. Mm -hmm. uh, are you able to provide credentials for each cloud provider or only one cloud provider in the heat.conf? In the heat.conf, uh, we can give it for, um, currently the upstream uh, heat supports only OpenStack. But it provides a mechanism to define the endpoint of multiple OpenStack endpoints. Uh -huh. But we can extend that to support the different endpoints like Amazon. Yeah, or but various yeah, things. yeah, yeah. You can support those through plugins. Yes. But each one of these providers have their own credentials. Yes. And my understanding is, in the heat.conf, you can only specify one set of credentials. Is that right? No, we can we can uh, give the endpoint of multiple clouds. You can provide account. endpoints, and for each endpoint, a set of credentials. Yes. Uh, so, so if I have multiple yeah. accounts, etc., all of that can be specified. Uh, we we can specify the um, we can specify the multiple endpoints in the heat on conf, but currently, uh, when heat establishes a connection. Um, it only validates the availability of the endpoint in the heat.conf. Correct, correct. Need, and not yeah. only that, mm -hmm. the users log in through Horizon, mm -hmm. which accesses Keystone. Right. The tokens come from Keystone. Right. And if your heat engine is bypassing the Keystone, correct. Um, then you have a problem, right? Um, so you have, let's say, different users using different accounts, mm -hmm. and through different accounts, they want to access Amazon or some other cloud. Mm -hmm. um, so, so if your heat.conf is providing one set of credentials, mm -hmm. but the user wants to use another, that's a problem, right? Yeah, basically, like, you know, if you are making your heat independent of one particular open stack mm -hmm. at that time itself like you no know, you are actually decoupling yourself from the destination keystone mm -hmm. so the heat has its own local keystone that's what is used for authentication all the operations that we do on the destination open stack is only validated through the keystone of that particular thing but you can execute any template through the standalone heat yeah so what is not possible today mm -hmm. if i understand you right mm -hmm. is you cannot have different credentials to be used to access a remote cloud provider uh, from your local heat engine. No, we can yeah. do that. Uh, so, like, no, it is not available as part of upstream, but it is possible. It's Other, possible, yeah, but in the demo that I showed you, yeah. I orchestrated against the different clouds, and I have different credentials for each of these clouds. So yeah, maybe we can take this offline. Sure. What I'm saying is, for a single cloud provider, mm -hmm. I cannot use d multiple credentials for different users who are going through Horizon. Right? So I, I, basically, you need to like you know, uh, decouple it from Horizon also. Yeah. We, so the, we well, well, then then it yeah. it is no longer a standard OpenStack. I mean, you can do a lot of things on your own, but it's you, you no longer have the benefit of. Horizon UI or other benefits you get from the OpenStack. Yeah, basically, like, no, when, you, when you have to make it a standalone, uh, you are actually decoupling it from Horizon because yeah. Horizon does not provide the ability to maintain the template libraries yeah. as of now. Okay, okay. okay. And, and the second question is, um, if you change anything in the heat.conf, you have to restart heat engine. Um, is that still true? Uh, yes. Okay, so, so if I add another endpoint, another credential, mm -hmm. and then I have to restart it. Exactly. You, we need to restart it, okay. yeah. But that can be bypassed. Well, the, uh, I mean, <laughs> sure, you can say you can be bypassed, but it's not something you can just like that do it in production mode. Uh, yeah, basically, you know, that's uh, the one that I showed you. 
I can dynamically add a service account and I can dynamically execute it against any clouds. So, so one question just to make sure, even mm -hmm. when you're provisioning against OpenStack, you're not using the heat, which is part of OpenStack, but a standalone heat instance, mm -hmm. and you orchestrate from there, right? Right, right. Do you have plans to, um, this is the second question, to add um, more providers like vSphere, for example? Uh, vSphere? Yes, to support also, it's, it's not exactly a cloud, but there is virtualization support. Yes, we, so we, ha we support uh, vCenter as well. Um, we, ha we have the, we have hot extended to the vCenter as well. And this is also um, open source? Um, currently, no, uh, oh. but we are planning to open source some of the plugins that we have developed. Oh, the plugins for AWS are open source or not yet? Uh, not yet. AWS is not yet. Okay, thanks. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, thanks for your time.